Okay, firstly, as you all know, our team for 2019 and 20, both were enlarge your capacity. The end of 2018, God gave me this, this theme for two years. And I knew for sure it was two years. And um, what we did was we, we preached on deeper in prayer. We preached on higher in faith. And, uh, and a greater in harvest we have not gone into deeper yet. But deeper in prayer and in faith, many of us have been, and, and, and been seeking God. And, and you, some of you can say that your prayer life has gone deeper. Some of you can say that. Some of you can't say that. All right. Now, some of you can say that you have gone higher in faith in your families, in your lives. You've gone higher in faith. All right. And, and others may be able to say that you moved much in the things of God. Your capacity was enlarged. Others will be able to say, some may not be able to say, all right? But the fulfillment of this theme will be seen in a fuller measure in this year, 2020, visualizing greater in harvest. Visualizing greater in harvest. So the fulfillment of this two year theme will be seen in 2020. And you will know when God promises something, He will make sure He does it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. Louder amen, please. Amen. Amen. Now, talking about enlarging your capacity, it is the move of God in your heart and your lives when you begin to flow with what God expects. Enlarging your capacity is the move of God in your own life, in my life. It's a move of God in our life. Now, friends, as we seek God in prayer with the desire to know Him and discern the secret of His heart, and we move closer to him and discern the secret of his heart, what happens is that develops an enlargement of our spiritual capacity and what will happen is you will experience him in a deeper way. Amen. And there's enlargement of your capacity. You experience him in a deeper way. And then as we apply the word of God in our lives, as we apply the word of God in our lives and as we take steps of faith, in our daily circumstances, I said on, on, on the New Year's Eve, when we take steps of faith, applying God's word and taking uh, daily steps of uh, in our daily circumstances with God, you will find yourself that your faith capacity is being enlarged daily in your circumstances as you begin to do that. Now, in 2020, we are going to see a great harvest of souls added to the kingdom of God. Will you say amen, amen. together? And you say amen, you are agreeing with me. Yes. All right, you are agreeing with me. All right, as we preach, as people of God, Harvest Bible Center, as we focus on God's plans and God's purposes, you'll find that what will happen is the, the whole family of God will be drawn close to God in intimacy. Everybody say intimacy. Intimacy. You'll be drawn towards intimacy. Now, what I, I, I quickly want to say that the two promises that God gave uh, me for, uh, for Harvest Bible Center, direction of the Harvest Bible Center, now those of you who are here on the New Year's Eve, don't get bored, but just be reminded of these two promises, all right? And uh, the two promises, the first promise was Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 to 19. Habakkuk 17 to 19, he says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the wines, though the labor of olive may fail, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And verse 19 says, The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and He will make me walk on my high hills. He will make me walk on my high hills. Now, friends, what if are, this first promise for the for HRC is it may look like you never prospered in 2019. It may look like you never never prospered in your ministry. It may look like you had no fruit in your ministry. It may look like nothing happened in your family. It may look like your life in 2019 was just flat, you never grew up. It may look like that. But here Prophet Habakkuk says. Yet I will joy in the God of my salvation. Amen. And then he says, the Lord God of my strength will make my feet like deer's feet. Make my feet like deer's feet. 
and you will make me walk on high hills. That means when you join in the Lord in your present circumstance, you are going to go on a higher hill, higher ground, higher ground. Don't do not see anything coming up in 2019, but you're going to see, you're going to go on a higher hill. You're going to walk with deer's feet on higher, higher ground, higher, higher hills. As I told them quickly, let me quickly say that, that, the, that there's a significance of the deer's feet. The deer's feet behind hind feet is so strong and, and when, when the front, front feet uh, uh, jumps, the, the back feet, the hind feet goes and touches the same area that the front the feet touches. It doesn't go one inch before, one inch below. It goes exactly and is so strengthened that it's able to scale on mountain, mountainous areas and rocky areas and it scale on the mountainous and rocky areas and then settles on high hills in high mountains. Friends, that's what's going to happen to people of HRC. That's what's going to happen. Do not be discouraged. Do not be disappointed in 2019. Do not be disappointed and, and, and think about it. And remember, when you get to rejoice in the Lord and your feet will become like deer's feet and you will go higher, that means you will enlarge your capacity. Somebody say Amen. amen. Yes, it will, you will enlarge your capacity. You will go on higher ground. That was the first promise. The second promise is a very familiar scripture, but just the Lord spoke to me just on one small area. Second uh, uh, verse promise was Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now, it springs up. And then what I want you to focus is, do you not perceive it? Do you not perceive it? You know, perceiving it, receiving it, is a perception of faith. We're talking of a higher faith. If you're rising up in your faith capacity, you're perceiving it in faith that now it springs up. And then he says, I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Land that was wasted, land that was, land that was dry, he will make a, a rivers to go through the wasted land. He will bring the rivers, streams of living water. Now this, this tells us that you and I have got to perceive in faith of what he is going to do in 2020. What he's going to do for your family. What is he going to do for your children? What is he going to do for the church? You perceive it in faith, all right? And forget the former things. When I say forget the former things, you will be, what I mean to say is you stop talking about the past, you stop talking about how that happened last year, you stop discussing what is happening in the last one year, you stop all that, forget the former things and say what, what Paul says, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind, and I strain toward what is ahead. Amen. That's what we're going to do, friends. If you do that, I tell you, we will move on, we will rise up to higher level. Amen. And I just quickly want to Said that three things I mentioned to the congregation in uh, to, uh, on New Year's Eve. Uh, Eve. One is as these instructions. These instructions for us is firstly return to intimacy, return to God, return to the closeness with God, and second I said was realign your thoughts. That means realign your thoughts with God's thoughts, because His thoughts are different from our thoughts. His ways, His plans are different. So you and I have got to realign our thoughts, our ways, our plans with His plans. With His ways. That's number two, realign your thoughts. And the third thing I mentioned was rely and obey what God says. Rely and obey what God says. I gave that, that example of how Jericho was brought down. Jericho, Joshua heard the, 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 the instruction from God to march around seven times the seventh day and then to shout when the trumpets blow and then the whole of Jericho wall was down. Alright, that's what I said, rely and, what, and obey what God says. Alright, so why did they have the victory? They had the victory because they obeyed every instruction given by the Lord to Joshua. That's why they received, they received uh, their victory. Every one of them obeyed what Joshua commanded. Every one of them obeyed what Joshua commanded. Alright? So if you see, if you want to see victory in your life in 2020, you want 
to see 2020 becoming so prosperous, so fruitful? You want to see that? Obey the Lord in any situation. As you obey the Lord in any situation, you're going to see the victory. Just like how Jericho wall fell down and, and Joshua gave the instructions and the people obeyed. When the people obey, they receive that victory. All right? That is a summary of what I spoke last uh, on the last service. And uh, this morning, just I want to go a little bit more. My, my message, I like to entitle my message, Father's Heartbeat and Intimacy. Father's Heartbeat and Intimacy. You know, Father's heart is filled with love for his children. Just now when we were, when we were partaking of the communion, I just felt God was reminding me, you know how much he loves us? In all our weaknesses, in all our nonsenses, nonsense that we do, he still loves us. He loves us so unconditionally. While we were yet sinners, he died. That was the love of the Father. So Father's heart is filled with love for his children, friends. You know, we, are, we were created to be loved by the Almighty. We were created to be loved by the Almighty. You know, the Bible says in Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, the Lord in the midst of us is mighty. He saves us. He rejoices over us with gladness. He quiets us with the love and He will exult over us with loud singing. Alright? Maybe it's just going to be put up. I'm going to give you some time to look at the scripture again. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. The Lord in the midst of His verse is mighty. Number one. Second, He saves us. Then He rejoices over us with gladness. He quiets us with His love and He will exult over us with loud singing. He sings over us. He rejoices over us. And God sings with us. Sings over us. He, he loves us so much. He sings over us. So friends, you and I are His heartbeat. You and I are His heartbeat. He loves us so much. He rejoices over us. He sings over us. Now as children of a loving and faithful father, as children of a loving and a faithful father, we need to know and understand his heart's desire. We need to know and understand his heart's desire. You know, friends, his heartbeat, his heartbeat is for us to get to know him in a real way. His heartbeat is that his children will love him with all their heart, with all their mind, with all their strength. That is heartbeat. That his children will love him like never before. Like never before. You might have been a Christian for 20 years. Now check and see, check and see how much of your love for him has grown. Has there been an enlargement of your capacity to love God like never before? Has there been an enlargement for 20 years? You were saved 15 years, 20 years. Can you examine your heart and say, how much has my love grown, enlarged my capacity to love God? You know, friends, his heartbeat is for us to get so desperate to know him. So desperate to come to that closeness and intimacy. His heartbeat, and, 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 and if, if we know his heartbeat, we will live a life pleasing him. We will live a life pleasing him. His heartbeat also, friends, is that none should perish. None should perish. He's a loving father who loves us so much. And he doesn't want anybody else in your home, anybody in your family, or anybody outside of, of your friends for them to die without him. That's his heartbeat. None should perish. He doesn't want anybody to die. So friends, if you and I become so intimate with him, we know his heartbeat, and I tell you, we will start praying for our family members who are not saved. We will not give up. You will make sure you, 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 you love him so much, you are intimate with him because his heartbeat is to make sure that your relatives, your friends come to know God. So you will begin to have the same heart to see that your people, your friends come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way. Now my text this morning is Psalms 27 verses 1 to 4. Psalm 27, 1 to 4. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked come against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumble and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may arise against me, in this I will be confident. In this I will be confident. So as I told you, my message this morning is Father's heartbeat and intimacy. We will never know the heartbeat of the Father without intimacy with Him. We can put up a big, beautiful team, greater in ours, but we will never know it so deeply if we don't come to the intimacy with the Father. If we don't know the heart of the Father, this greater in harvest is just going to be a theme on the wall, on the wall. But church of God, if we can come close to Him with such intimacy, knowing and discerning the heart of God, I tell you, there will be greater in harvest in this place. Something will take place as the people of God become so close, so intimate with Him, so intimate. You know, you and I will never understand the heartbeat of God and how much He really loves us until and unless we experience intimacy with the Lord. You know, talking about intimacy, friends, and you know something? That is the most important thing in the child of God. It's not how well you can worship me. It's not how well you can play music. It's not how much you can do for God in the church. What is most important in the life of a child of God is to be intimate with the Father God. With the Father God. So friends, let us refocus and get back and return to intimacy to know that every believer sitting in our Bible Center will be so close with God, you will love God so much and you want to love Him like never before. And that's what will happen, friends. That's what will happen. His heartbeat and none should perish will become so important and become a reality to us if we are not, we will not become a reality to us if we will not be intimate with Him. Now why should I bother? If I'm not close to God, if I'm not close to intimate with God, what will happen is, I'll be more concerned about my, my family. I'll be more concerned how my children do in, in, their, in their work, in their business. I'll be more concerned about my family, myself, and everything about me. But when you become intimate with the Father God, His heart, His desire, becomes so important to us. And that's why this morning I'm, 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 I'm speaking with the unction of the Spirit to let the whole church know that intimacy is the most important thing. And even if you're not serving God, but if you have a closeness with God, the intimate heart's desires of God, God will direct your steps. God will tell you what to do. But the important thing is intimacy. Hear the heartbeat of God. Discern His voice. Discern His voice. And you'll never be the same. I tell you, friends, uh, you know, His love for us, that intimate prayer fellowship is so important. That intimate prayer fellowship causes you to love Him more and more. And then you will desire to do His heartbeat. And then you will desire to touch lives. Now, many of us, friends, we have been Christians for many years. Our Christian life is, well, we wait for Sunday, we come and serve and we go back. Throughout the week, we don't talk about God. We don't, we don't spend much time with God. And nothing stirs us within to touch lives. All right? But when we are intimate with God, daily having a prayer fellowship with God, what will happen is, throughout the week, you are conscious of God. God consciousness. Throughout the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you become so God conscious and you want to touch lives. You want to do something for God. You want to see the kingdom of God extended. You want to see the kingdom of God established in Chiding Park. You want to see. You have a desire to see. When you have the desire, I tell you, you go on and you will go on talking to people about Christ, bringing them to the church. All right? Now, when we begin to have the enlargement of our capacity in every area, we also want to see all our congregations increase. Now, it's not just the increase in the number, it's increase in the maturity and the capacity of the congregation. People will look at the congregation and say, oh, now less people. I'm telling you, that is not the measure. The measure is the quality of, of God's people that will go out and touch lives. If you and I will go out and touch lives, I tell you, then 
indirectly, we don't have to see the red chairs. I said, that's not important, the numbers. But I'll tell you, if you are intimate with God, you will go out and touch somebody's life, and you will go and save people and rescue them from hell. And then when you come into the kingdom of God, you will see every red chair filled. That's enlargement of capacity. So how does it happen? It has to happen with us individually. Each one of us have got to have that closeness and intimacy with God. You know, friends, intimacy is not optional, but it is a fundamental basic of the child of God. Fundamental basic of the child of God. So I want to encourage myself, I want to encourage you this morning. Let's get to the closeness. Let's not go one day without talking and having fellowship with God. Many times we do that. We get so busy, we rush off. And then say, oh, I didn't do my prior time. But let's, let's, let's fix our eyes. Before when we pray, I say, let's give God the priority in our lives. Let's get back to that. I want to encourage you. I mean, we all have come some time or the other. We are so busy. And then we, 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 we go astray. But God, God is calling us back to intimacy. You know, the, the prophetic word given by Pastor Benedict Rajan for, uh, for 2020 is... Uh, uh, God is calling his people to rest through intimacy. God is calling his people to rest through intimacy. I have, I have written down, I have got it printed out in the, the points in the bulletin for January. You can look at it, all right? Now, we're looking at this, friends. In these last days, God is looking out for people who have become close with him. That's exactly what he's looking out for, all right? Now, as you grow in intimacy with the Lord, you mature and then you multiply. As you become intimate, you grow, you mature, and then you multiply. So, indirectly, the numbers begin to grow. Do you remember in, one, in, in the book of Acts, 3,000 people were saved at one time? And they began to tell people about Christ. The book of Acts, you see, 3,000 people added, 2,000 people added, different people added to the kingdom of God. All right? And <clears throat> so they are just flowing. I mean, if you're, if you're not experiencing the intimacy with God, you are just following a religion called Christianity. It's not different from Hinduism. It's not different from Islam. That is, if you're not having the closeness and intimacy with the living Father, that makes a difference from any other religion. If you don't have the intimacy, you're not walking with the closeness and talking and walking with God, you are just following a religion called Christianity. Not different from Hinduism. It's the same. That's why people outside say all gods are the same. Why do they say all gods are the same? Because they have not seen the people of God becoming so intimate with God, walking and talking and hearing God. The world has not seen the people of God have got a real God who is alive. You can walk and talk. He answers your prayers. The world has not seen that's why they say Christianity is also another religion. We are, all gods are the same. But the church has to know all gods are not the same. But for all who received him, to them he gave the power to become a child of God. You are a Christian when you receive him personally into your heart. Now let me give you another scripture. Psalm 27 and verse 8. Now when, when you said, sit my face, Psalm 27 and verse 8, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Here the psalmist, psalmist is speaking, right? The psalmist experienced such a, such a close, close walk with God. His heart says to him, he says, I will seek you. And he says, do not hide your face from me. The psalmist is now longing to see the face of God. The psalmist is saying, do not hide your face from me. He cherished and he truly desired from his heart to seek the Lord and he says, don't hide your face from me. Now friends, look at this. If the psalmist was not so desperate and to be so close, would he want to see the face of God and tell God, don't hide your face from me? He was so desperate. He was so desperate, you know. And then Romans 8.15 For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear but received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out Abba Father. Now, it's father-child relationship. 
His father-child relationship, he is daddy, Abba. He is daddy, he knows your inward parts, and he knows how much you can take. Some of you in 2019 have gone through a lot of trials, a lot of problems, but he never let you down because he knows how much you can take. He will not tempt you beyond what you can take. He knows our, con our, our, our constitution inside. And he knows how much we can take, how much challenges we can take. He knows us so well. He knows what is best for us. He always wants the best for his children. His best for you and I, our friends, are awesome. So the context of this Psalm 27, if you look into the whole Psalm 27, you see, is one of fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and oppression. Go back and read it, alright? Read the whole, whole Psalm. It's talking about fear, anxiety, uncertainty, and oppression. Now, when there is intimacy, fear leaves. When there is intimacy, anxiety disappears. When there's intimacy, uncertainty goes off. When there's intimacy, uncertainty is converted to trust. Everybody say trust. trust. Your uncertainty in your lives will be converted to trust. You're today, you're uncertain about what's going to happen to my children in 2020. What's going to happen to my life, my, my business, what's going to happen in 2020. There's an uncertainty in your life. But today I'm telling you, when you have the intimacy with God, the uncertainty will be converted to trust. You'll be able to trust Him like never before. Amen. Trust. Intimacy will take you to the trust, friends. Intimacy will take you to the trust. And in the scripture also says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. We all know that. All right, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And then verse 7, and, and the peace of God it passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. The peace of God will, which passes all human understanding. Things that you and I can't understand why it happened. I'm sure you're sitting here this morning and you're questioning in your heart, why that happened in my family? Why did this happen in the church? But I tell you friends, when you come to intimacy with God, the peace of God which passes all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. And I, I, the scripture I, I told on New Year's Day was, when, when you are completely intimate, when completely trusting God, your mind is stayed on whom? On thee, the Bible says. Your mind is stayed on thee. The scripture says, you shall have perfect peace when your mind is stayed on thee. And so let's focus our mind. Let it stay on Him. And we will experience that powerful peace of God that the Bible talks about. Alright. Very quickly. Uh, there's three dynamic examples of the people of God. And it actually shows us the, the driving factor for intimacy with God. Three factors, alright. Now one is three examples, I mean, not three factors. First was Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 1 and verse 4, remember? And Nehemiah... Uh, received news that, that, the, that the survivors from the captivity in the province are there in great distress. The survivors of the captivity, they are in great distress and reproach because the wall of Jerusalem is broken down. So that was the condition of, uh, of the, the people that are the, capt uh, of the captive, uh, the survivors of the captivity. Now what happened to Nehemiah? Now, when Nehemiah heard this, he was so moved in his heart and, and he, uh, he, when he heard these words, he sat down and wept. He sat down and wept. Nehemiah sat down and wept. Now think of Nehemiah sitting and weeping when God's people are being oppressed. How do you think he was able to go down deep in his heart and weep for them. God's people, how do you think? It's because Nehemiah was so intimate with God. Because he was so intimate with God, anything that happened to God's people and God's house, they can weep. They can cry and pray. Pray, pray with tears. You know why? When you have intimacy with God, you can pr cry and pray. Your tears, your tears, God sees. And how can he cry? 
what crocodile tears or what? Try to cry. Some people try to cry, you know. <laughs> Imagine nothing, no tear coming out. <laughs> but here, Nehemiah heard it and he sat down and he wept. Now, for Nehemiah to hear that news and for him to sit down, it speaks about something, friends. It speaks about something. Because of his intimacy with God, something that happens to God's people and Jerusalem affected him deeply. Something that happens to God's people and Jerusalem affected him deeply. So friends, when we are intimate and close to God, anything that happens to God's people all over the world would affect us. We hear in the newspaper and everywhere, Christians killed, raped, murdered, chopped off their head. God's people, Christians, are being oppressed, killed, raped. Do we come to our tears and say, God, is your people, Lord, have mercy upon them? Can we sit down like Nehemiah and weep? If we cannot do that, we are not intimate with God. When you're intimate with God, when God's people are oppressed and killed and murdered, you will cry. You will say, at least I pray for these people and the families. You know the persecuted churches all over the world? You know how many Christians have been persecuted? How many pastors have been beaten and put into a prison? You know, I remember the, the time when I was preaching in Andhra Pradesh in one of the villages. The next village, there was a, a pastor who was caught and killed and murdered. And here in the other village next door, I'm standing and preaching God's word. Can you imagine, friends, when God's people get oppressed and persecuted, the people of God will be able to weep and pray for them, the persecuted church. You need to pray for them if you are intimate with God. If you're not intimate, it doesn't make a difference. It makes a difference for my, my son, my daughter. If this happens to my child, my daughter, oh, I will weep all my heart out. But it happens to God's people. If you're intimate with God, you will weep for the people of God. All right. So I hope you catch this, friends. Let me quickly go on. Time is catching up, and, <clears throat> and it will have affected us, friends. So Nehemiah moaned, fasted, and prayed, cause it affect, cause it affected him. When we're intimate with God, anything that happens to God's people, Christians, we will have at least pray. We will at least pray. All right. So when we interview God, souls that are lost around us, are deceived by the enemy, would affect us. Souls that are lost outside, your relatives, your friends, who are outside who don't know Jesus, they are on the way to hell. So it will affect us if you are intimate with God. If you are so close with God, God's heart is that they should not perish. They should not go to hell. So when you are intimate with God, you will begin to pray for these people who are not saved. So many of some of our family members are not in church today. We need to pray for them. We need to be affected to know my family members, my cousins, my, my, my in-laws, they are not in God. But when we all come to that intimacy, that closeness, we will pray and make sure. Now I want to just put, in a, put a, a thing to you. And before 2020, at every one of you sitting here, at least pray for one person to come to Jesus and bring them to church on a New Year's Day 2021. Start praying from now. At least one soul. You pray for one soul to come to Christ and you bring them before, before we celebrate next year's New Year. All right? Just want to exhort you, friends. So when we intimate with God, the souls that are lost will affect us. Will affect us. All right? The other example is Daniel. Daniel chapter 6 and verse 10. All right? Now when Daniel knew that the decree was a sign that, uh, that, that nobody should worship the Lord God. What he did was he went home and in his upper room with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God just as was his custom since early days. Early days, the way he prayed, he continued to pray. Now Daniel was so close and faithful to God. Daniel was so close and faithful to God that he knelt down on his knees and prayed to God even though he realized that the king has signed the decree. Even though he knew that his king has signed the decree, he could face the lion's den. He could face the lion's den, but he prayed. Like what he used to do all the time. Alright? And that's what intimacy can do, friends. 
Daniel was intimate with God. That's what intimacy can do. Fear is gone. When you're intimate with God, there is no fear. Fear is gone. Anxiety disappears. This morning you're sitting here, at least one or two of you, have, have, you're anxious about something. There's something that you cannot tell even your own family members. You are anxious. But here I want to tell you, friends, the only way that anxiety can go off is not the doctor giving you some antidepressant pills. I can give that to you if you want. I'll give it to you free of charge. But after two days, you will still be anxious. You stop the medicine, you will still be anxious. Anxiety will rule you. But I want to tell you, when you get to intimacy with God, close to God and love Him like never before, anxiety disappears. Fear is gone, entire anxiety disappears. My friends, in the midst of uncertainty and fear, do not let your fear cripple you. If you're fearful, what is 2020 going to hold for you? Alright? Don't let your fear cripple you. Don't let your anxiety rob your peace. Don't let your anxiety rob your peace. Do not let your uncertainty create hopelessness in you. Alright? Even if your business didn't do well in 2019, doesn't mean that in 2020 is going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. It all depends on you. You say it's not going to be the same because I will yet rejoice in the Lord and He will take me to high heels with my, uh, with my feet like the deer's feet. Alright? So you, you decide. You tell yourself. My business is not going to be down in 2020 because yet I will rejoice in the Lord. And like what Habakkuk did. And you're going to see your 2020 becoming so prosperous. You're going to see you're going to be so fruitful. Amen. Your life is going to be so fruitful. So your spiritual life will never be the same. It will be fruitful. Amen. And you'll see something wonderful that will take place. Do not let your limitation paralyze you. Do not let your limitation. Sometimes you feel so limited. I, you feel limited that I cannot do more than what I can do. But when God speaks about enlarging, that means there's no limit. There's no limit in God. He will enlarge, enlarge, enlarge your territory. Alright? So friends, turn them into all these things, turn them into an altar of intimacy. Turn them into an altar of intimacy. Into intimacy. Call unto me, says the Lord. Call unto me and I will answer you. So if you are intimate with God, you will know that what is his secret in his heart. So when you call, he already knows what you're calling for. He already knows what is your need. He already knows what you're troubled with. He already knows what are you anxious about. He already knows. All he will do is call unto me and I will answer you, he says. Call unto me, I will answer you. And if you see, friends, you know, intimacy is, is a prize. It's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's a gift. Intimacy cannot be earned, deserved, undeserved, but must be worked out in experience relationship, experiential relationship. Experiencing, experiencing God. You know, remember Paul, he says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I may know him. That means I may be intimate with him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Paul knew him in the fellowship of his sufferings. That means Paul suffered for Christ. He knew him in that suffering. Some people say, oh no, you are in Christ, you don't ever suffer anymore. But some, there's something in the Bible called ministry of suffering. God allows Paul to go through suffering and he knew him. <coughs> he came to know God in an intimate way, not only with know him, the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering, being conformed to his death. Being conformed to his death. So friends, it is an experiential uh, relationship. And Jesus was a perfect example. You all know that, right? Jesus was so close to the Father, all right? He worked out in intimacy with the Father by sacrificing his sleep. His rest, his comfort, Jesus sacrificed. Early in the morning, some, some days in the, in the scripture that says that he, he prayed all night. He prayed all night. That means he, he sacrificed his rest, his comfort, all because he wanted to be so intimate with the Father. Jesus wanted to be so intimate with the Father, so he, he, he sacrificed his sleep and comfort, all because he was so wonderful. He wanted Christ 
in him because he and, and, and father are one so he wanted on earth as was Jesus he wanted to hear what the father is saying and do he only wanted to do what the father told him to do can you imagine how close he was intimate with the father Jesus and the father God only what the father said he wanted to do father says don't go to this place take a, take a longer route and go somewhere else he obeyed when you are intimate with God, you and I will do the perfect will of God. You and I will be so sensitive, you will hear the voice of God, and we will do what the, the heartbeat of the Father is. Alright? So it's so very important. He disciplined himself, prayed all night. In closing, friends, what I want you to say, what I want to say is, without intimacy, there cannot be proper intercession. Talking about deeper in prayer. Let's go back to that. Why did I put deeper in prayer? Is it because by saying many prayers or coming for prayer meeting regularly? No. When I say deeper in prayer, is coming close deeply with the heart of God. In other words, without intimacy, there cannot be proper intercession. Some of you may think that you're a prayer warrior. How deep are you in prayer? How deep are you able to hear the voice of God? How deeply you know the secrets of God for your life, for the church. How deeply do you know? That's what I mean. When I say deep word in prayer. Alright? So without intimacy, there cannot be proper intercession. And the final one is, without intimacy, intimacy, there will be no intervention. Without intimacy, there is no intervention. You want your life to come as a spiritual woman, as a spiritual man of God. You want your life to come Intimacy is the secret. It's not how well we can preach, how well we can worship lead. It's not about all that. It's not about all that. It's that closeness and intimacy that brings God's Spirit to intervene into our lives. And our lives will change. And 2020 will be a year of fruitfulness. 2020 will be a year of joy. 2020 will be a year that we are prospering strength to strength. Grace to grace, we will rise up and we see the enlargement of our capacity. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Stand with me, friends. Uh, as the musicians come, stand with me. Yes. You know, the scripture is very, very familiar scripture. Very familiar scripture. It says, Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. What does it say? It says, If my people, what? If my people, what? If my people will humble themselves, pray and seek my face, seek my face for intimacy, all right? If my people will humble themselves, seek and pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal from heaven and heal them. So friends, they will restore. Then you humble yourself before God and seek His face for intimacy. He will heal the land. He will heal your families. He will heal and restore the church. He will heal your personal life. He will restore everything that you have lost. He will restore you back. Amen. Double, hundredfold. He will restore what you have lost. Friends, don't forget. Go back and underline in the Bible. Second Chronicles 7.14 in closing. Alright? And I trust that you have received the word this morning.